All right, welcome everybody to another live streaming showcase here from Austin, Texas, brought to you by Music First Hand. I'm your host, Chris Petrafka, and I'm really thrilled. I think we're in number five or six now, and, and the only reason we keep it going is because of the likes and shares. So all of you at home, I hope that you're enjoying this. I hope that you like the fact that we, we bring you um, Austin artists, and we bring them to you in an intimate way. And, and the whole reason we do this really is to bring it to you in a, in a maybe a different style and format that's so a little more fun, it's a little more weird. Um, it's a, maybe a little bit more ridiculous. As a matter of fact, if you're a, you're a passionate, consistent viewer, you might recognize we have an entirely new set. And thanks to the folks at um, the, uh, the Austin, uh, Austin Gift Company, sorry about that, the Austin Gift Company, um, who set me up today. I walked in there today. And have you, have you ever walked inside there? It's like just a big house of like awesomeness of all this stuff. And so the first thing they told me I needed to get was the chicken mask. Without the chicken mask, it's not really a show. So I'm glad you've tuned in tonight. If you're watching this uh, live or you're going to watch it later, please like and share. That means a great deal to us. That is the currency that keeps it going. And if you want to sponsor us, we would love to have your sponsorship. Um, we've had Cuve uh, Coffee as a past sponsor, and we've had Compass Rose Cellars as a past sponsor. And so we're really thankful for that. And so, hey, with no further ado, let, let me introduce you to tonight's guest. Uh, it's a real pleasure to introduce to you Aaron. Uh, I, got a, I had an opportunity to go stalk him down and see him play at Geraldine's. And let me tell you, I, I had a man crush right away. And so, hey, with no further ado, let me bring to you the amazing, incredibly talented Aaron Stevens. Uh, thanks for having me, Chris. I appreciate it, man. This is a song called Bad Weather. Is rolling in. I gotta go through this again. Hey, I could really use a friend. Hey, and I know I can count on you. You're always there to pull me through. Help me calculate a move. Hey, no matter what things will come our way, life is full of obstacles. And some things have changed, but we are still together. Through this bad weather, we're still together, baby. surprised we found you on an off night. It feels like you you play every night of the week. I, I play often, but you know Tuesdays usually it's Tuesday. Right? Yeah, Tuesdays yeah. usually a chill. <laughs> a chill night. I some, I've said the wrong day before. I've been like, oh yeah, it's Thursdays, man. Because like, as an artist, every day <laughs> is a work day. Yeah, right. Any given day, yeah. Yeah, it's not like you get you're like, man, I really that's Friday. I get Saturday off. No, that's the work week. Yeah, that's my that's my work. That's my right. Work starts Friday. 
And so you do perform um, quite a bit in town. And Austin is great for fans. It's great for us. Uh, for a lot of you who live here in Austin, I know many are, are dialing in from everywhere in the planet. But for those of us here, it's fantastic because we get to see a lot of great artists. For artists, it can be a real challenge, though, right? Because there's a lot yeah. of talent. You really got to hustle. So, yeah. and, and what's that like every day for you? You know, it's it's great. I, I like it's, it's a blessing to be around so much music. To be honest, I mean, uh, there's areas where this community is. I mean, community yeah, a community like that does not exist. You know, yeah. so it's cool to be in a community where music's appreciated. Where right. you know, people can go hear music at any given night. Good music. You know, that's a great thing. I think. I don't think that's something to to be. You know, to want to be fighting over. That's something. Yeah. You know, that's, that should inspire you. That's know? right. So. Yeah, it's, it's great because there's, um, especially you can go catch a show at midnight and you're going to catch a great show yeah, somewhere, right? Definitely. Um, we just had Carson McCone on uh, a couple weeks ago and like she's playing I think, tomorrow night at like midnight at okay. the so, and like that's worth setting your alarm for. Yeah, right? like, that's a good show to go to. Right? It's a great show to go to. Aaron Stevens is a great show to go to when he's playing at midnight. Yeah, he catches, yeah. <laughs> midnight's right. late though. Sometimes those midnight shows are hard for the people who work like on a Tuesday yes. or on a Tuesday night, you know? It's very tough. But those weekend midnight shows, that's where the... That's where the funk's at. You got to go to that's those. That's right. Yeah, that's where the good ones. So, and, and whenever you're, t tell us a little bit about um, some of your experiences of getting some of these shows. Like, how difficult is it? Because I imagine, you know, you're getting up and you're running a, uh, like, your own startup. So, mm -hmm. you're getting up and you're sending emails and you're probably beating people's doors down. Yeah, there's What's a little bit like? of that. You, uh, you want to be professional about it, but it's... It's like having, like you said, you know, being having a startup or anything like that. You just have to be adamant about it. You know, you have to reach out to the venues and follow up. There's a lot of following up. And you got to send back those text messages and reply to those emails, you know. Yep. Sometimes it's hard to keep track of things like that, you know. But yeah. It's in the digital world. It's hard. Stuff gets lost and stuff like that. Information doesn't yeah. come across as fast as it used to. Well, it true. comes across fast, but not as clear, maybe, yep. always. Probably a lot so, of mix-ups. Yeah, a lot of mix-ups and stuff like that. Yeah. But, it, right. What's the hardest you've had to work, or what's the, the, the most what's the most uh, craziest thing you've had to do to get a show somewhere? The craziest thing? Oh man, I don't know. I don't think I, I've been lucky where I haven't had to do any. Too, I haven't had to beg too much to get a show. Not in you know to say like, oh, I'm awesome, Dad. It's like <laughs> I could just go anywhere I want and play. But <laughs> well, no, but we just, know that. Hey, it just it's <laughs> been it's been good. You know, I've, I've had uh, I've met some people who have gotten me into good places and I've gotten into some places on my own and stuff like that so it's it's just worked out yeah. like, pretty well. It does seem to be a lot of the artist community helping each other out. Yeah, what I've that's seen. what it, a lot of it is. It's really just uh, knowing someone who could get you in the door. Yeah. Or at least having some some way of getting in the door. Are there um, are there some musicians in Austin that come to mind that you'd want to give a shout out to? Oh, definitely. Spot, no, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I recently played a show with the Peterson Brothers and like, man, those guys are so good. I can't say that enough. Yep. Um, those guys are so talented, man. Uh, they they played before us at Continental Club, and just following them was like mind blowing. It was like, dude, like that's some energy right there. So we we definitely had to bring our energy to our own yeah. energy. You know, and, you know, it's, it's different, but we had to bring our own energy. That's to. right. Peterson Brothers are great, um, but you've played at some bigger places in town yeah. as well with some some other other names. So, yeah, you know, Any others you'd recommend to us? Oh man, uh, Ben C Ben Cena is another great artist that I've okay. found the right with and stuff like that. He's a friend of mine. I, I, you know, he's a, a great artist. And yeah. He plays uh, shows around here as well. Uh, Jackie Benson's great. I've seen her. Yep. Uh, he played with her at Geraldine's one time. And she's amazing. She's doing some great stuff. There's so many good people in, in Austin. It's yeah. not even, and I find too. It's I not, could sit here all day and just name like yeah. artists. Yeah, like, and it's I mean, it's too not even just some of the bigger name artists that we hear of. Oh yeah. Like, you know, I, I work with too a lot of artists that are hustling hard every day. But man, they're like they're so also incredibly helpful to other artists mm -hmm. trying to lift people up. Which yeah. is what really makes a community special. I think those are the most special artists too. The ones who don't see it as much as a competition, as as much as just like, hey man, yeah. come come jam with me. You know, I think that's I appreciate that from artists more than maybe even their music when they're when they're a cool person too. I don't yeah. know if that's a lame way of saying it, but really like when they're just a down to earth person, you know, it's that helps. It makes their music even more special. Yeah. There's only a handful I've run into, and it's true, this is human nature, right? where, you, where you find some that maybe are a little more difficult and others that are just absolutely willing to help out. Mm -hmm. um, so your debut album came out in 2014, yeah. right? And it was on the Lone Star Music's list, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was, that's, that's right. 
So, um, so what else? What have you been working on? What's going on? You have a new album coming out. Yeah, What's working happening? on some new music. Okay. Definitely. We just put out a song in May. Like May is the summer's flown by. May is gone. Yeah. But we put out a, a song in May called Satisfying Line, and uh, it's been getting some play on Sun Radio and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's really cool. That's like, right. Getting some Austin love and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, we're working on some new music for uh, an album, hopefully by next spring. Okay. So. And can you tell us about what what, what are we gonna expect from the album? How's it different from the last one? Uh, I think you could expect some maturity. I think it's okay. been three years. It's yeah. I've definitely changed a little bit since you know, 23. Yeah. Um, but I think you could expect the same you know, heart and, and soul that I like to put into the music. And that's, what I, that's what I love about music. That's right. So I try yeah. to bring that to it. And that comes out in your music. I mean, it's like, it's, it's, there's this, uh, it's this such heart and soul. And it's like one of these things, I, I, well, you know what is going to happen is that I bet you probably don't even know how many actually, how many babies are you responsible for? I mean, seriously, because I'm, I'm, there's so much soul. I mean, I, I'm seriously, my wife and I are going to be driving home one night and we listen to Aaron Stevens. The next thing that's going to happen is I'm going to be like sending you a bill for child support. <laughs> oh man, I hope I don't get any bills like that. But I'm happy to provide music for people for whatever situation they're looking for. So. Yeah, you're, you're like the, he's like the Wilt Chamberlain of soul music, man. I'm going to tell you, Aaron Stevens. Um, so Aaron, can we hear maybe a little bit more more music? Yeah, and you, you even teased up. We might hear some new songs. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'll play one of those new songs right now for you. Cool. Let's hear it. Uh, it's a song called Whatever You Need. And it's about being there for your friends, you know, being there for the people who, who you love no matter what. I'll be your rock, I'll be your strength I'll be your cover in this pouring rain Hold you tight and let you know When it's okay to let me go Your whole world turned upside down You don't know which way to turn right now Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll hardly prepare for this kind of thing Know that I'm there for you Tell me what you need Whatever you need In times of trouble, in times of joy Through the rubble and past the noise I'll be standing in your corner, yeah, I'll always be there for you, yeah, 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 your whole world turned upside down, you don't know which way to turn right now, yeah, I know that you're scared, you could hardly prepare for this kind of thing, know that What you need, whatever, whatever, whatever you need, Ooh, whatever you need, Ooh, whatever you need, your whole world. Upside down, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you don't know which way to turn right now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Know that you're scared. You can hardly prepare for this kind of thing. Know that I'm there for you, yeah. yeah.
and so we've already figured out that, that you're responsible for a lot of children. Tell me, though, <laughs> do you have a girlfriend? Yeah. Or, okay, yeah, yes. I have a girlfriend. Uh, she's a great singer. Her name's uh, Evan. Uh, okay. She sings, too. Uh, she doesn't really pursue music as a profession, but she has a beautiful voice. It's a, more of a yeah. hobby for her, though. Okay. But it's great to, when we get together and sing and stuff like that. It's yeah. Really fun, yeah. Do you guys perform together live? or just yeah, Every now and then I'll call her up and she'll and she'll come up and sing. She, sometimes she gets kind of shy out there. She doesn't really like necessarily yeah. being up there on stage. Especially if, if it's not a song that she likes. Because sometimes yeah. I'll have her sing a song that she might not be a particular fan of. Not It's a covers. We usually do covers. Okay. And maybe we, sometimes we do them a little too often. So that's what it is, I think. And so she likes when we do like newer stuff. She likes the new songs, the later yeah. songs, yeah, the latest songs. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's uh, we and we had Jake Farr on recently okay. too, and he performs a lot with his wife. Nice. Uh, and he was, you know, we were talking about that, the creativity that happens, but also the tension that happens, you know, when you're performing with a significant, a significant other in that case. So that's um, a testament to you in that relationship. So. Yeah, I, I could see it getting weird. I guess sometimes if you're both like really. You know, artist and hard yeah. in the sleeve type thing. So I, it could get kind of emotional, but not really with yeah. me and her. Yeah, she's that's good. Her, yeah, All right. Well, she's watching. I'm sure right now. So yeah, yeah. she might be. I think she did the movies though. She, <laughs> yeah, she did the movies, so she's probably not watching. Because I have seen this enough. She'll catch the later. The there screen, you go. Yeah. All right. Well, like and share. <laughs> like and share. <laughs> and so you're you're from Illinois and. Your your past is a bit of a mystery, man. I'm like look, looking to try to dig up some dirt. Out. I couldn't find any dirt. Everything's just is like the guy from Illinois. Yeah, well, so man, it's funny. I yeah. spent only you know the first seven years of my life in Illinois. I grew up down in McAllen in South oh. Texas yeah. in the Rio Grande Valley. So okay, I would uh, I would say that's my hometown. That's really maybe that's why you can't find us. It's so we're so far south. There's not a lot yeah. of information or something. But. So from McAllen, where what part of Illinois are you from? I'm curious, just because I'm from. Oh yeah, Illinois. I was born in Skokie, oh. and then uh, okay. lived in Bartlett for a little bit. My family all grew up in Illinois, you know. So really? my, yeah, my parents went to Illinois State. Oh okay. Like that, yeah. So I'm familiar with Illinois. My my grandma lives in Illinois. Gigi, Linda, if you're oh, watching. All right, nice. I love you. <laughs> oh, it's great. Yeah, I grew up in Central Illinois, so I'm okay. very familiar with that whole area. All right. What part of what was the city? Right. Like I grew up in a town called Oriana near Decatur. Okay, well, I've heard of Decatur. Yeah. Okay. And uh, near Champaign Urbana, yeah, and that okay, other, yeah. yeah, that's right. Oh, cool. That's cool, right. man. I'm and, sure you're a fan of the uh, Chicago Dog. Uh, I'm not as no? much, but really? I know, yeah. Pizza, yeah, yeah. yeah. definitely the pizza, Chicago okay. style pizza. That's what you go, man. Uh, I've, heard, I've had like arguments with people because they'll be like, "Yeah, New York style pizza." Uh, and I'll be like, "That's crazy." I don't know, man. Like Chicago, everyone knows like deep dish. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. How do you eat that thin stuff, people? Y'all like just pizza just flops over. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, all pizza's great. Yeah, I'm that's true. Right. Pizza is good. Uh, yeah. Every time. <laughs> I'm trying to get you worked up, but send us your questions about your pizza, and we'll ask. Um, <laughs> and so, um, so speaking of you, McAllen and Illinois, uh, how often do you tour things? I, I noticed you know you have a lot of shows here in the area mm -hmm. coming up, but um, tell me about your tour schedule you know, and touring, getting outside of uh, the state. That's a little bit been a, more of a challenge just to get yeah. out of Texas. It's so big, but we have had a. Yeah. We've had some opportunities to get out to the East Coast to mm -hmm. go to Virginia and uh, Alabama stuff like that. And we try to do stuff more like around the summer and the winter, like for that type of for traveling. And that makes sense. During the year, more or during like the spring and stuff like that, or usually around here, around right. town. But I mean, we're open to playing anywhere, honestly. So it's yeah. really just a matter of getting out there. I guess. So. How do you set up a tour? Um, and and you know, tell me this in, in the most just plain and simple way that you can. Yeah. Um, because for me, I, you know, I'm not a musician. I don't know what that's like. I just see an artist go on tour, and it looks like, wow, what a cool rock star. This is how easy it is. Yeah. Let's go out on tour, and everything is well, great. Man, honestly, like touring is, is funny because I, uh, I heard someone talking about it. They were saying touring is like a, it's like a traffic jam. Oh. It's like everyone's kind of like, you know, because it's not really impossible. Yeah. It's not impossible for anyone to go out on tour. It's just booking some shows, you know, and then yeah. you're going on tour, you know, especially right. if there's a string of shows far away from home. But to go on a tour that you know that is successful, I think that's a different different thing. Yeah. And um, I thought it just takes you know your name being out there and just getting out there. Yeah. Like I said, you know that's all you can do. You send out those emails and and uh, line up shows that are close enough where you can make the drive. You know. That's yeah. Really, there you go. Make those really connections. Like yeah. That's and, the way to go. And now, do you do a lot of house shows like just house? Yeah, concerts? I love house shows. House shows are probably the the most fun shows because they're so mm. intimate. And you mm -hmm. could tell people want to hear the stories. Like that's what it's all about. Yeah. Usually those types of shows. The that's right. The conversation you have between the audience. And stuff like that. Yeah. It's kind of it's lost sometimes in the club gigs because they just want to be hit and like again and again and again. 
with house shows you could chill out and you could let they, you could play the slow songs because those tend yes. to do well at like house concerts the slow like story songs and stuff like that yeah I love it it's, we, we do quite a few here and uh, yeah yeah we do it in our backyard we love it that's and, good uh, yeah it's the outside's just, probably nice so like, it's nice yeah, right in like the an evening time type mm-hmm. thing yeah sun goes down oh yeah. man but you get people in that bubble it's like really gets yeah. quiet and you almost have that nice like rustle to the leaves and yeah, sound. Yeah, you hear everything. Yeah, you, you get the goosebumps and you're right, the artist can tell the stories yeah. and then you, you get to hang out with the artist afterwards. It's just, it's just fantastic to spend that time with an artist like that. Oh yeah. How do you find house shows? How do I find them? Um, a lot of times the people who uh, throw the house shows, they're really good at just coming up to you and being like, hey, I, I yeah. do house shows, you, would you like to play? And yep. They usually just talk to me at a gig or send me an email through my my website stuff like that. Okay. Uh, there's some companies though out there too that you could uh, reach out to and they could that's uh, true sync you up. I think you yep. do something some yeah, yeah right? we have one coming up yeah yeah that's, that's right. great too I, that I think that's really cool I've heard of, like the so far stuff like that yeah like, those are intimate up. yeah that's cool I think that's a great that's good great thing for music so if you're watching and you're here in Austin like just reach up and talk to Aaron, you know, after a show, because a lot of people sometimes get too intimidated, like, I don't got to talk to this artist, he's on the stage, very big rock chill. star, <laughs> yeah, that's right, very approachable, you know, I stalked him down at Geraldine's, and we had a great conversation, and here we are now, and so, that was a good time, that was a solo show too, yeah, and Ger- Geraldine's, that's tough sometimes, because like, it's a, people are eating, and yes, they, food and music, like, it, they go well together, but they don't go well together, because people, like, they hear it, but they're not, they don't pay attention, yeah, to that's it, right, so. Oh, yeah, I was back, like, giving the stink eye to everybody eating dinner up there. But it's okay, because it's it's still a nice venue, like, you can't complain. It is nice, you're right, yeah. Um, So that's a great spot to play. And then you have a residency coming up here soon, right? Yeah, we're doing a residency there this month on Thursdays, and then we're starting one next month at Seaboys on Thursdays. Oh, yeah. So we got our Thursdays uh, booked for a while. That's great. And then what time at Seaboys are you playing? I think that one starts at 10.30 or so. 10.30 every Thursday? Yeah, yeah. And Geraldine's is probably at 9? Uh, 9.30. 9.30, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. 9.30 time slots. So Geraldine's this Thursday, those of you in Austin, and then after yeah. that go to Seaboys, which is a pretty cool venue too. Yeah, That's still you know, I've big. never even been to Seaboys, which oh, is really? crazy. It's my, my first time being there is going to be when I play, which I kind of like that. You know? Nice. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. I might have to show up and at least check it out. It's kind of like rock star status. Kind well, of not even in that way. I just like like taking in the vibe and then playing. You know? Like If I already know the vibe, yeah. then like I don't know. It's like part of the fun is to like, Gone. Yeah, that's right. Showing up to a place you've never been and playing music is kind of a crazy yeah. experience. Hey, uh, so uh, I got a question from the audience. Yeah. Um, so uh, Mario asks us, you know, what is your uh, favorite song to cover? My favorite song to cover, man, uh, I love Bill Withers. So we've been doing a, a lot of Bill Withers stuff lately. I really like uh, "Use Me." It's a great song. Oh yeah, yeah it's a great I, song. I love that song. And, People like that song too, so right. I think that's, that one's probably my favorite cover at the moment. I would ask you to it's do changes. it, but then YouTube would shut us down immediately. Yeah, yeah. Don't, <laughs> don't you have to pay any uh, license? I know, right? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> that's right. We have Aaron Stevens' approval, but uh, that's the extent of it. Um, and hey, send more questions if you have if you have questions, because my questions are entirely lame. But I know yours online are great, especially uh, Grandma. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, she's watching. She might be at the movies too. Everyone's at the movies. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron's gonna be online live streaming. We're going to the movies. <laughs> Uh, so let me ask you one more question, and then then I'd love to hear just a couple songs. Yeah. I think a lot of your fans probably tuned in to, to hear you play, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, so if you know, if I were to shrink, crawl inside your ear, get inside mm-hmm. that head of yours, and go on a little adventure, what that what is that like inside your head? What's it like? Um, there's definitely a lot of music playing. There's a, uh, probably a weird soundtrack playing too because I, mean, <laughs> I listen to all different types of stuff. Um, if you catch me on a day when I like hip hop, you might be like, "Oh man, this guy's like, he's angry." You know, like, you know, he's got a lot of anger. But no, I, I just, I think they might find the at most days, um, I'm pretty at peace with uh, just playing music, and I'm pretty happy yeah. to be doing that. You know, yeah. I'm, I feel like it's a blessing to be able to share my gifts with people and yeah. write songs, and to be able to do it for a living is crazy. It's really, it's not a very common thing when you think about it, even yeah. on the small scale that I'm on. You know, like to be able to. Show up, to show up to work with my guitar, man. That's cool. Man. Isn't that great? Yeah, yeah. It's a cool experience. Well, I'm glad you're working tonight. So I'm yeah. going to put you to work and <laughs> let's right. hear some more let's music. <laughs> well, we were talking about new songs. So I'm going to play another new song. Great. I want 
want you here with me Things are what they used to be Colors don't look the same It's like you triggered something in my brain Tell me why Tell me why When I look at you Forever's on my mind Tell me why Tell me why When I'm with you I'm feeling more than fine And I can't forget you It ain't easy, no I can't let you walk out that door Won't you stay a while Stay a while Oh, let me make you smile Make you smile Tell me why Tell me why When I look at you Forever's on my mind Tell me why Oh, tell me why I'm with you, my world is more than fine, more than fine, more than fine, and I'm with you, I'm feeling more than fine, more than fine when I'm with you, more than fine when I'm with you, more than fine when I'm with you, more than fine. song called Shadow. <laughs>
Thanks, man. Very good. It's my favorite part of the show because, like, you know, you, you audience members get the, the artists all to yourself. I get to move off camera and dance for a while. That is the cool <laughs> yeah, part. You're lying, though. You really you got some groove. Yeah, I'm just glad we can't pan this camera over there because you would you would all really be turned turned off, and then we'd, we'd have zero <laughs> viewers. Um, so the two new songs, pretty positive, right? Oh, those yeah. were great. So that, you can always tell where an artist is there a good place or a bad yeah. place, right? Like what's oh, going yeah. on. Definitely, man. So, so that's great. Are definitely a happier sound. Yeah, yeah. This kind of puts you in just like this good, good spot. Yeah, I'm trying yeah. to get. I'm trying to be in that that vibe all the time, you know? I think that's the way to live. Yeah. A lot of babies. <laughs> <laughs> hey, nothing wrong with children, man. <laughs> hey, let me ask you a goofy question. Uh, or maybe not. Maybe you, you might take this a different different way. But um, what is, uh, what's your favorite place to hide? My favorite place to hide? Man, um, this might be a, a weird answer, but I, I like hey, hiding. I think the bathroom is a great place to hide. You got water. You got, uh, <laughs> it's very logical. You have a toilet, yep. you need that, you know? And I'm, I, I've written some, a lot of songs in the bathroom, too. I think that's a, uh, you got some good acoustics, too, so you can't go wrong. Man, you took that question right where I wanted you to, which is great, because that, that, that's, that's where you, you want to know where, where does that the inspiration come from writing the songs, so. Yeah. I'm glad. Now we're all, this is intimate, right? Now we know Aaron in the bathroom. It happens. There's definitely been a few songs written in the bathroom. I wasn't, I wasn't doing anything, but I was in there. Uh, so then, let me follow up with a serious question. What's um, what are some of the first bands and musicians that you were really into at a very young age? Right okay. before before you were kind of told who to listen to, who did you listen. really get into? Well, I can't like can't sit here and not say uh, guys like Stevie Wonder and Al Green, Michael Jackson. You know, that's the stuff yeah. that my parents, you know, grew up listening to. So yeah. they played that around the house. Love that music. You know, the Motown stuff, Otis Redding. All the soul stuff, you know, growing up. But then I got older, and of course I had my, you know, my boy band days. Everyone liked at least one boy band. I liked in sync, you know. Stuff like that. <laughs> Ever uh, seen them in concert? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I okay. saw them in concert once. It was crazy. And I'm not ashamed to say, man, like, <laughs> that was good stuff back in the day, you know. Got to own in it. In the '90s, dude, they, they were it, and I, yeah. I got to see it. That's right, yeah. <laughs> but then I got older, and I started listening to all types of stuff, you know, the songwriters. You know, I'm a, I like John Mayer a lot. I got into yeah. Bob Dylan for a little bit, mm. you know. I've gotten into the all. I have my phases, you know. Yeah, yeah. Just listen to something for a long time. I could see that. You know, I hear some of that stuff off the first album, right? And it can sense a little bit of that, that influence, of that singer-songwriter. Yeah, and yeah. Thoughtful, um, the lyrical prose is really Love that stuff, too. Yeah. yeah it's, it's just as important as the groove, you know, what you're saying. Yeah. You no know, guilty pleasures, man. I mean, I, I mean, had, like, the Purple Rain poster up. <laughs> oh, man. man. Prince. Like, so, yeah, Prince. Yeah. I, can't, I can't believe I didn't even say Prince, dude. Uh -huh, Prince I awesome. know, right? I should have said, yeah. That's yeah. Like, you were talking about baby making music, like, dude. I know, right? <laughs> That's like <laughs> the, God, the Godfather of baby. <laughs> uh, oh, so hey, we got another question that just came in. So Kathy Metcalf, shout out to y'all. Hey, Thanks. Kathy. That's right. Um, she says she would love to hear "You Never Left My Mind." Ooh, I, I you know, I, I had a feeling that she was gonna tune in and want to hear that song. So nice. I love to play that for you. Do you want to do that for yeah. us now? Yeah, All right, great. Here's this one's for you, Kathy. <laughs> At 
the times we had Ain't it funny how things got this bad, baby, yeah Oh, 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 you never left my mind Can't leave you behind Yeah, you never left my mind You never left my mind Oh, oh. you never left my So, um, again, that's a nice, positive song, right? Yeah. Something you want to connect with. Mm -hmm. um, and it's one that people, I think, want to resonate themselves with and think about their own relationships. Definitely. Right, and it kind of takes you into another world. And so um, you think about things that have changed your life, right? Because that song could change people's, can really change people's lives. That's and I mean, awesome that sincerely, hear. right? Yeah, I mean, I know I've listened to music and been like, wow, that's completely changed my viewpoint on things, right? Yeah. Um, are there some documentaries or movies or books that you think back on and think, wow, that it changed. changed yeah, it's really, really, you know, it's kind of set you hmm. maybe on a slightly different course. Oh man, there's the first thing that comes to mind is uh, you said music, right? There's a because there's an yeah, album sure. that came to mind when you when you talked about that that changed my life, and uh, it was the Mis Miseducation oh. by Lauryn Hill. Yeah. And man, that album for some reason, like <laughs> when I first heard it, like just everything she was saying, man, it was really just getting to me at that time. Like, and that album is really. It's a real. I, I I remember telling my sister like you know like ladies in my life. I was like, guys, listen to this album. Like this is like for y'all. Like this is such a empowering album yeah. for women and like for all people. Like it's so like so many good songs in there. And um, that was like probably the only album she made, I think. And it's crazy to put out something that to this time is still so strong yeah. and still so relevant. Mm -hmm. You know, like that's a, a crazy thing. And so that album changed my life for sure. Yeah, Miss Education, Lauren Hill. Think about yeah, these even today, right? Yeah, the crazy times that we're in right now, uh -huh. like that album. Right? Still relevant. Still relevant. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Any other movies or movies? books or uh, anything man, else? like for me, books and movies. Like I read a lot of like artist docu like artist biographies. Okay. So I wouldn't say anything that was in there was too life changing, but it's interesting to get a a perspective on life from artists, like how they lived, how they came up, and stuff yeah. like that. I've read a, a Marvin Gaye biography that was really great just to see how ins inside his head and he was an interesting dude. Um, Bob Dylan has a book called Chronicle, I believe, something like that. And that's okay. a great book that I read too. Yep. Um, I love artist biographies. So I like reading those. So I think those are maybe like all as, as a whole, reading all of those have helped me, you know, kind of just figure out how to, you know, how to portray, as how to be an artist, you know, how to portray myself to people and how to, Play the songs yeah. for people. What to what to write about? Or what to talk about? Because they start to shift to your way of thinking. Yeah, um, it definitely does. Because you, you want you want to be like those guys, of course. Like yeah. you want to be an artist like them. You know, you're not going to be make music like them. You're going to make music like you. But you're you want to learn. You know, you want right. to learn from the masters. You know? There's a good one too. You might enjoy. It. Um, I think it's um, Bob Boylan who does the Tiny Desk concert on NPR. Really? He came out with a new one, I think, a year or so ago. Okay. It's something about uh, how your song changed my life, or it's a long. I might, that sounds really I might cool. mess up the title, but you would really enjoy that because it is it's stories about these artists, right? And mm -hmm. how their songs were so powerful and they changed our life. Yeah. Um, and Bob just a really fantastic guy and an incredible host for Tiny Desk concerts. So it's a good one I recommend. Uh, so with Bob, what's his last name? Boylan. Boylan. Okay. Yeah, he's great on NPR. I've seen those Tiny Desk concerts, but I've never seen a, them have like a host, like someone like Bob interview Boylan. and stuff like that. I've always just seen the performance part, so I need to. Yeah, and he perform, and then he well, sorry, he reviews the performances, but then also mm -hmm. um, he hosts a regular show on NPR. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that's and like, right. Okay, yeah, the actual Tiny Desk show. Yeah, okay. yeah. Cool. Um, and then another great one you like is The Tenacity of the Cockroach. What is that? It's uh, the AV Club. It does The Onion. Okay. They produced it, and it's it's a great it's a great bathroom reader. 
All right. Just your perfect book, Aaron. <laughs> All right, thanks, man. <laughs> yeah, it's a great <laughs> short stories of these artists over time. Like it's one or two pages on people like Alice Cooper and these other artists that their tenacity yeah. and what they fought through to to, to, to really get sort to of break big. Yeah. Yeah. So you like that? It's one. crazy, man. Everyone has a story, you know. They have a place where they started and they got to. And people just because you just see the artists for what they are right in that point yeah. in time. You don't think like, hey, man, this guy like grew up in a small town and I know. did all the same things that you did. You know, like they just that's just what they do. That's just. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. They come out of a small town somewhere, and, and a lot of people don't think they've got that courage to do that, right? Yeah. So I think that's pretty powerful. Um, uh, let me ask a, a shift gears a little bit. Let me ask uh, a question here. That um, oh, actually, one just came in. So let me ask another one. Um, oh, so Linda Jones Lane asks, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, "Is the uh, black fedora your signature?" Yeah, definitely. You know this. I know Linda, <laughs> aka Gigi. My grandmother. Ah, I love it. You know this is a signature hat. Uh, wow. she, she wants to share it with the rest of the fans. What's oh, yeah. the story behind the hat? Well, my mom got me this hat, so I've been ah. uh, I've been rocking it because you know when mom buys you something, you gotta wear it every time you see her and everywhere you go, so she could see it on Facebook. Oh, that's so, great. And shout out to my mom too. I think she might be watching. Nice. Hey, mom. Yeah, I love you, mom. Proud of you. <laughs> Thanks for the hat. Yeah, I love the hat. <laughs> I dig it. I need to get the hat. I'm like blinding out. You probably half my head's missing. I'm pretty sure in the show. <laughs> I do love the hat. Are there any other signature uh, besides the hat? Signatures. Yeah. I do wear a lot of black. Okay. But I'm a sweater. That's why I try to you know hide my sweat with black. Good strategy. Hey. <laughs> but uh, I'm trying. I'm trying to branch into some more colors. So I started wearing the the, the red boots. I don't know if you could get those on camera. Nice. Maybe not. Oh yeah, you got them on camera. I'm cool. Digging the red boots. So we got some color in the outfit. You know. Got to add some, maybe a scarf or something next time. We'll see. Some peacock feathers. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, we got another one here, too. So, um, uh, Andre uh, Stevens Sr. Oh, asks, yeah, yes, yeah. great. So, I love this question, too. So, um, how do the blues affect your style of play? All right. Great question. That's my uncle right there. Nice. Um, Andre, what's up? You know how the blues affect me, man. He, he used to give me some albums, man. He used to give me oh, yeah. uh, the... Doobie Brothers. He gave me the Doobie uh, Brothers album. I remember that, and I love that album, man. I didn't. That's when I heard about guys like Michael McDonald. That's not too, you know, old school Delta blues, but they were definitely influenced by the blues. Mm. Uh, but guys like Buddy Guy, BB yeah. King, of course, you know, like that stuff's. You can't help but be influenced by, it. So especially as a guitar player. Yeah. Like that stuff is just, yeah, the blues, man. That's it's foundation. It is like, uh, yeah, every singer songwriter too that we've seen, you know, it's kind of part of that. You can't deny. Blues being part of that system. Uh, every style, almost every style of music had some influence to blues or country. You know the roots. The music yeah. Style. If you had one go-to blues artist, I know you mentioned Buddy Guy, B.B. Mm -hmm. King. Are there others? Your your go-to blues artist? Blues artists like are you talking like old school Delta blues guys? Yeah, that's or you or new guys. You can yeah. name a couple. Uh, man, I love you know new guys. Gary Clark Jr. Great yeah. man. He's definitely carrying the torch for the blues music. And then old guys, guys like Elmore James. Yeah. Um, let's see who else. Old guys, you know, of course, Robert Johnson, guys like oh, that. Oh, yeah. Um, Bucka White. There's so many great old school. I mean, I love the Sly players, the old school Sly yeah, guys. Too. That stuff's great. Um, who else? There's another guy that comes to mind. I just, I said something with Nighthawk, I think. And hmm. not some, they had cool names. I think that's one thing that's new, too. <laughs> that's cool true. names, dude. Like Blind Lemon Jefferson. Oh, my know. gosh, yeah. Is that the coolest name? <laughs> <laughs> so many cool names. That's good. So, um, can we do one more song? Do you have one more yeah, in your more. repertoire? Let's yeah, do one yeah. more, and then right. ask you a couple questions, and we'll close it out. That sounds right, good. Cool. Yeah. Here's a song called "Satisfy My Mind." You make me feel so good inside. Sensations that I can't describe. Send vibrations up my spine Quench my thirst and satisfy my mind Satisfy my mind Hey, satisfy my mind Oh, satisfy me, baby
question for you too mm -hmm. right? um what's the best piece of advice that you've ever received that you'd want to also let us let us know and, and carry that forward um the last guy who produced my album uh, his name was mick j mm -hmm. his name is mick j i mean he's a great guy a uh, great musician and he uh he told me one time i did an interview with him for uh, for a class and uh, he just gave me he gave me some advice within this interview that i, I still remember to this day he was, it was on my phone sometimes i always listen to it it was so good man he was like man just be good to people you know, if you be good to people, then it all comes back to you, you know, full circle. And that's such a true thing, man. Like, just treat treat people the way you want to be treated. It's, we've been told that our whole lives. But to actually sit down and be like, man, let me try this. You know, that's it really works. That's such a beautiful thing, man. Just treat people the way you want to be treated. All people, you know, be good to people. Man, isn't that so much, so much more true today? Uh -huh. Especially, right? We just need, need more of that. Yeah. That's great advice. Hey, so thanks everybody for tuning in tonight. Uh, we had Brenda, Cecilia running social tonight. So huge props to her. Ben Levy, as always, running sound mm -hmm. and video. And, and we're all volunteers here. We got Claudia Kulaga also on social running, running um, from helping us promote and stay in contact with people. Um, so thank you guys. Please like and share. That's going to keep the show going. We're here just because we simply love um, Austin Live music and, and love bringing you folks like Aaron Stevens here. Uh, this Friday, we've got Jean Caffeine. She has an amazing history. Like, she grew up in the 70s punk scene in San Francisco. So cool. Wow. Right. Pretty That's crazy. Cool. She's going to be on her Friday at 6 p.m. We have a bonus show. Next Tuesday, we have Nick Diaz of Buenos Diaz. And Nick plays guitar with Alejandro Escovedo. Oh, nice. So this is going to be a really good one. That's next Tuesday at 7 p.m. But we plan to go live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. And we'll continue as long as we get the likes and shares. So I hope folks will do that. And so... Aaron, thanks for coming on tonight. Thank you, man. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Thanks See you Friday. Night.